Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 17th, 2018 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, Didier wrote a diary with some shortcuts helping you to reverse malicious visual basic code. What this mostly about is trying to decipher these obfuscated strings that are typically passed to create objects. Well, uh, the DA's assumption here is it's actually somewhat predictable what the attacker would like to create here with create objects. And often obfuscation doesn't change the length of the string. So using these assumptions, you are able to make some intelligent guesses as to which object is being created without having to jump through all the hoops and deobfuscating the code. So neat little trick if you do a lot of reverse analysis, but probably also requires some experience to sort of make the right guesses here. But then we also have a question for you listening to this podcast or reading our blogs. Did he for a long time now is seeing in his web logs an odd user agent? That user agent is UA Tools Random. This looks like a function, a variable that wasn't properly expanded as the attack tool was run. So it really looks like a, an attempt to create a random user agent that failed. So if you have any ideas, which attack tool could create a string like this? Well, uh, please let us know. And then we got a new denial of service attack against Safari. Now, typically crashing a browser isn't really all that exciting, happens quite often, but this one is in particularly devastating for iOS, where it actually reboots the entire phone. On desktop versions of Safari, it appears to, at least under some circumstances, lock up the browser. There are also some reports that this may affect some other browsers. For example, Chrome, if you enable the right development features, or Firefox may be affected by this. Also, there are some reports of Internet 11 on Windows 7 being affected by this vulnerability. So it appears that the vulnerability is actually part of WebKit, which is the Apple rendering library that is included in a lot of other browsers as well. To trigger the vulnerability, all you need to do is visit a malicious website that delivers the right cascading style sheet. Now, Apple, of course, is scheduled to release the next version of iOS uh, this coming week. The latest beta apparently is still vulnerable, so unlikely that this particular vulnerability will be fixed. Now, sticking with Apple here for another story, but this is actually not a vulnerability in any Apple product. Instead, it's a vulnerability in WebRoot's Secure Anywhere product. This is a security product that's also being sold for OS X, Mac OS, and it contains a privilege escalation vulnerability. Of course, security tools like to run with elevated privileges. They do consume a lot of data that is provided by users. In this particular case, the user can provide a pointer that the security product will then write to. So this way, the attacker could get arbitrary write access. The Vulnerability is not all that easy to exploit. It also has been patched a couple months ago, so you should be all good, but double check if you are running this product to make sure that you are up to date. And Intel is patching the Intel management engine again. So you may have seen some updates in the last few weeks or so for this one vulnerability being addressed is one that was found by positive technologies. And it's really an update to a vulnerability that was originally found back in 2017. The vulnerable component here is the ME file system or MFS and it is encrypted and there are a number of keys being used in order to manage uh, this file system. Now the original vulnerability in 2017 did leak all the four basic keys that Intel uses uh, to encrypt and decrypt uh, this file system. And while this original problem was patched, there was a new problem introduced that actually did leak still to non-Intel keys, as they are called, that are also used to manage the management engine file system. So again, an attacker could 
add or overwrite files in this file system that can then compromise the management engine. Now, disabling this management engine is tricky if you didn't get your laptop with it already being turned off, but it's certainly worthwhile considering if you are able to do so and if you have never used this management engine. Otherwise, uh, please apply Intel's latest patches. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.